the National Online Learning Day is celebrated on September 15th every year to recognize the advantages and vast potential of online learning. It also honors the accomplishments of online students everywhere. Online learning has revo um, revolutionized the way we learn. It offers students flexibility, convenience, and access to a wide range of courses and resources. Online learners can study at their own pace from anywhere in the world and on their own schedule. This makes online learning an attractive option for students of all ages, backgrounds, and circumstances. I love online learning. Have you Shame. taken any online courses? I'm taking one now. Aha! <laughs> I was going to say that I think that before COVID, people probably didn't pay attention to online learning. But I think COVID was just the thing that tipped it over. Yeah. At least for me. I mean, I had done a lot of like, uh, work for us. E-learning is, is a big part of that. Uh, the kind of work that I do, knowledge management, is a huge part of it as mm -hmm. well. So it wasn't a, a, a new concept, but I think at that point, people embracing the technology, embracing remote work, remote learning, all of those things sort of came together, right? Um, so how do you find it? Is it something you, 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 know, you find easy? How does online learning work for you? Honestly, it, it, depends. So it depends on the course that I'm taking at the time and my mood. Yeah. <laughs> so I think sometimes it can be very interesting and enlightening because I'm excited. I'm learning something mm. new, something I can apply um, to my everyday life or to my work, mm. to my job or something like that. But there are times when I feel like, you know what, I've assimilated too many cherry parts of that course and now I want hands on. So now that practical is where the challenge is because mm. give me something to do because I need to apply it. Now, it, it, it's, it's worse if I can't apply it to my current role. Mm, 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 yeah. I see. So if I can't apply it, it means that I have to seek out that experience somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Now, getting that experience is where the challenge is because sometimes you might not find um, like voluntary projects or things to work on, mm. depending on your industry, though. I feel like there's some industries that obviously you definitely find. I don't know about people who do uh, medicine. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if online. <laughs> I don't know if online learning mm. would work. Would work well, for them. Well, I guess for some of the practical, um, the theoretical side of it, because I mean, before you get to the practical dissecting and, and touching a human body, you kind of need to know. Know all of theoretically. it. Yeah. So I, I guess there is a place for it, even in that. Um, but yeah, online learning for me is hit and miss. Uh, sometimes I think it depends on what I'm learning. Some things, um, for me benefit from the classroom so it's just like i think i'm also quite old school and uh, well traditional maybe is the word i should use or conventional but it's just like books i struggle with ebooks mm -hmm. i find that my mind wanders off yeah um with ebooks but the the sensation of holding a book oh. and flipping the pages yeah um sort of keeps my brain connected and i can smell the book all those things add to the reading experience so i find that listening to audio books or even trying to read ebooks, it's not the same thing. It sort of loses some of its essence for me. Yeah. And I think online learning also takes that sort of vein. So I prefer courses that are very interactive, things that you can watch and engage with. Yeah. Um, really, a, a lot of the time, when it's just somebody that is just talking and you're watching a video and it's just of somebody talking, it can be quite um, draining for me. Mm. But I still think that it offers, even from the perspective of, um, globalization and giving yeah. us access to knowledge yeah. that is, you know, all of it, you know, not from around here. Yeah. Um, it does add some value. So, yeah. yeah. Glad, I, glad I, that I, everything yeah. has a holiday these days. I so agree. But how, how, how is your attention today. span, though? I have the attention span of a gnat. It takes me two, two seconds and I've lost, like, lost, my attention is all over the place. <laughs> so, I really, it. and that's why I need something to focus on. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I need something I'm holding or uh, engaging with. Oh. But anyway, what did you find for us in the news today? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I think last week or two weeks ago, I had talked about um, some youth coppers, right, that mm -hmm. were heading to, I think that was Zamfara. Yeah, Zamfara. And mm -hmm. then they got, um, they got adopted yes, by Yes, the ones bandits. who were kidnapped. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So three of them escaped. And um, escaped. eight of them, yeah, three escaped. Wow. Only th um, eight of them were, were caught and taken um, captive of, and also mm -hmm. the driver as well. Um, now, the update right now is that they had asked for 13 million naira ransom. 13? 13, one three. Okay. Which the parents obviously gave to them, mm. but they still did not release the, 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 oh, the wow. purpose. So the terrorists or the bandits increased the amount. So to they paid 13 million and then they increased it? To 200. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
So everyone is, the parents are agitated. They're saying that um, government hasn't stepped in to, to assist them okay. yeah, with, with, with what's happening right now. And mm -hmm. um, they don't know what they're doing. But where I got this news from, Niger News, um, also mentioned that what people are saying is they would like the government to scrap um, to scrap um, NYSC, mm -hmm. basically um, not NYSC as a whole, but they need to stop sending um, graduates people out of states, to, yeah, out of yeah. states to those states yeah. where they feel like security is at an all-time low. Right. So yeah. to stop it, stop yeah. assigning people to certain states. Because it's states. like every yes, time yes. there is always kidnapping yeah. happening. Yeah. People are coppers are being killed, mm -hmm. and people are going missing. And for some reason, you keep sending them there, which doesn't yeah. make any sense. Because exactly. if you actually, if you actually care about the lives of your citizens, then you would stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so my story is um, short and sweet. So my headline says, um, Tinubu nominates Cardoso as CBN governor and names four deputies. So today, I mean, this was literally breaking. In fact, I changed my story at the very last minute um, to say that President Bola Tinubu has today approved the nomination of Dr. Olayemi Cardoso as the new governor of the Central Bank for a term of five years at the first instance, pending his confirmation by the Senate. In addition to the CBN governor, he also nominated four deputy governors, um, and they are Mrs. M.M. Usora, Mr. Mohamed uh, Datijo, uh, Mr. Philip Ikezo, and Dr. Bala M. Abelo. So those are the four deputies. Um, I mean, I saw this, and I, I did, so in fact, when someone said to me, um, oh, have you seen the story? I thought, oh, that name sounds really familiar, mm. you know. Um, and then I did a quick Google, and I was like, oh, yeah, so he was former chairman of Citibank. I mean, this is oh. from, from his profile. Yeah. He's a seasoned, um, he's a seasoned um, banker. Well, I say he's a seasoned financial uh, services professional. So he sits on the board of several, you know, I think there was Texaco, there was Chevron, like lots of different things. But mm. literally, um, he is... He has the kind of profile for somebody you want in that role. Yeah. I believe he also worked in the Tinubu administration in Lagos State oh. as a commissioner of, I think, planning, financial planning and budgeting. Um, I believe that's what it was. Okay. So, well, I think this is one that Nigerians have been waiting for, given everything that's happening in the economy, everything that we've seen happening um, with fiscal policy, monetary policies, all of those things. So this is one role or a set of roles that people have particularly been looking for and, you know, all sorts of um, things have been pondered around uh, who it would be or who these people would be. So the question's been answered. It does say that it's a um, nomination, but I guess it still has to be ratified by Senate and then um, we get to see how they're going to manage our monetary policy and mm. hopefully help the economy to turn around. Well, that's it for um, what we found in the news. I think... Um, we can take uh, a quick break, and when we come back, we'll jump right into the topic.